Here I have an Xbox One S, one terabyte digital edition, it's faulty, and I paid £43.87, which roughly equates to $54. The listing states, comes on but only outputs 480p. If you try and change the resolution to a higher one, it glitches and becomes unusable. I think it's something to do with the HDMI output bit, it will need repairing to be usable. I think I may know what's wrong with this one. I'm thinking, retimer chip. Let's get into it. First of all, let's see if the description of the listing is accurate. So what we're gonna do is power it on. I've got the HDMI plugged in and the power cable. Let's see if anything shows on the screen when we turn it on. I get a beep, that's good. We have power on the actual Xbox, that's fantastic. Half the battle. Oof, yeah, we can see, you see the glitches, the, the little green lines at the bottom, the green marching ants. See how it's flickering. Let's get inside this. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay specialise in custom printed circuit boards and also offer services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding. PCBWay pride themselves on fair pricing, on time shipping and 24 hours customer service. Use the link in the description to sign up to PCBWay and receive a $5 welcome bonus. Now back to the video. I've always found like this little bit here funny. Why, why include this? Oh, I guess it's four screws, right? To secure the top case. I guess that kind of would make sense. Other than just being really dusty, this Xbox is in great condition. Now, theoretically, if you wanted to be a little bit risky, you could leave the fan in, but the issue that you're gonna have is the retimer chip, which is here, is very close to the plastic and the fan. It's like sandwiched in between. So it's gonna be quite awkward to change it. However, I think it could be done. And I'm an advocate for always changing thermal paste when you open a console. Let's get the rest of this out of this case. Especially as well, this APU has hardly any thermal paste on the actual die, which is the square metal looking thing in the center. Not this one, that one. The chip itself looks reasonably healthy. We don't have any cracks or chips. Chip in a chip, does that work? Chip chip, chipception. There are a couple of dry solder joints here, but I don't think that's gonna be affecting it to be honest. And we've got one that's here as well. I could be wrong though. These could play a part as to why it's not working. The pins of the HDMI port look absolutely fine. None of them wiggle, they all look good. So I think our culprit is this little guy. I've just used a multimeter to check every single little pin on this chip and nothing is strangely jumping out at me. And when I say strangely, what I was looking for is something that was either shorted when it shouldn't be or a ridiculously low voltage drop like 0.2 or 0.1. Whether that's right or wrong, I do not know. We are just gonna check for continuity on the filter, so the meter is in continuity mode when we put two probes together. It beeps, making a complete circuit. What we wanna do is make sure that we've got a beep from here to here on every single line that we've got. These two in the middle, I believe, are ground, so we don't need to count those. Perfect, we got beeps on every single one, so that checks out all okay. I think our issue is definitely the retimer chip. I'm gonna put my hot air station on 480 degrees Celsius, warm the board up a little bit first, then come in and attack the chip. 99% airflow speed as well. I don't know if you saw there, but there was quite a bit of flux that started burning early on into that process of removing the chip. It was the brownish liquid. I'll put a replay on screen now. That actually suggests to me that this chip got so hot, it actually melted the flux previous. Whether or not that's true, I have no idea. Someone will probably correct me. I'm now gonna use a soldering iron just to bring down the melting temperature of the solder on the outside and probably put a dab on the middle as well. The solder I'm using, I believe is Weller 6040. I'll flux the area first. I've just added some more flux and we're gonna go with 450 degrees Celsius now with an airflow speed of 50%.
Now we're just going to use the iron to get rid of these solder blobs here. A little bit more flux to help it out. There we go. Same this side. We're now going to give it all a nice clean. After I've dried it off, I usually like to give it a once over with a cotton bud again, just to make sure it's really, really clean. This is just the method that I use, by the way, guys. There's so many different techs out there and different different ways that they use, you know? I think good practice is removing the solder completely using leaded solder and then putting more leaded solder on to flow the chip. That's probably the better method than what I've just used personally. Now we're gonna check our work and make sure we're all good. This side first, looking hunky-dory. These sides, yeah, hunky-dory. A little bit to the right, a tad to the right, but that's not gonna make a difference. But that will annoy me. And finally, these two, I think I might have checked one already, but yeah, they look swish. Nice. Now we've had this change, I'm gonna quickly change out the thermal paste. To clean the thermal paste, I'll just use a cotton bud to get rid of the first lot of it. Then I take the cotton bud and use it on the outside to get all this stuff off. And just to be safe, I use some isopropyl alcohol, which is in this little tub here. It's wicked. And just give it another thorough clean. Then once I'm happy with that, I take my MX4 thermal compound, thermal paste, posh name, and I apply probably the wrong amount, which is just probably like a P-shaped size. I'd rather have more than less, bosh. I also like to give the console a little bit of TLC, just using a brush to get the light dust off the board. This is the stuff that I do every video, but I don't really tell you guys. I don't know if anyone's interested or not. Maybe not every video, but every so often, it's nice to share what I do in between the action shots. I've already done the fan, by the way, that's why that looks different. I like to clean the fan off of the board, so then that way, when you put it back on, you don't get dust all through onto the APU. Rhyming genius. Time to now find out after it's had a nice old clean. Does this show a display that doesn't glitch? I've just turned it on. Yes, we do. Let's go. Let's just make sure it doesn't glitch out. I can't see any spots on this screen. This is the exact screen it was on before, and as you can see, it looks fine. No marching ants or green or red stripes or anything like that, so we're all good. If you enjoyed watching me fix this Xbox One X, I guarantee you'll enjoy this video that's gonna pop up on your screen right now, where I attempt to fix another Xbox One S. I won't spoil it. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace. My gloves are really dirty.